In example A, we need to find the perimeter and the area of the given rhombus. So what we need to do is find the diagonal 1, which in this case is 8 units. So we're going to mark D1 is 8 units. Diagonal 2 is 12 units. So our D2 is 12. And then remember our formula is the area is equal to D1 times D2 times 1 half. So we're going to just multiply 8 times 12, that's 96. So we got 8 times 12 times 1 half, that's 96 times 1 half. So our area is 48 square units. Square units. Now the perimeter, in order to find the perimeter, we've got to find the distance around the outside, right? So we need to find out what this long side is all the way around. Now what we do know is that each of these corners here is a right angle triangle. And we know that the short side of the right angle triangle is 8, and the long side is going to be 12, right? So we could use our Pythagorean theorem to find our missing, missing long hypotenuse side here, right? So that 8 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. So we got 64 plus 144 equals c squared, or 208 equals c squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, that gives us c is the same thing as about 14.4 or so, approximately equal to 14.4. If you like, you could do it in a, a reduced um, radical at 4 roots of 13, I think it is, something like that, 4 times 4 roots of 13. So side c then is 14.4 units, and we have one, two, three, four of those around the outside. So our overall perimeter is going to be four times 14.4, which would be 40, 56, and 16, so 57.6, approximately. About 57.6 units around the outside. Got to start learning to use these approximately equal to signs instead of having to draw over my equal sign every time. 57.6 units around the outside, that's our perimeter. Alright, in example A, it was, uh, it was easy to find the area because we already had our, our vertical and our horizontal diagonals and it was a little trickier to find the perimeter. In this second example, B, the perimeter is easy because we already know that each of our outside links here is 14 units. So our perimeter is just going to be 14 times 4 14 times 4, or 56 units. So that one's really easy. But now finding the area is going to be a little trickier because we need to find these vertical and horizontal diagonals. The only thing we know at this point is that our hypotenuse of each of these triangles is 14 units, and that our inside angle right here is 60 degrees on each of them. But what that tells us, actually we also know that this is a 90 in here, what that tells us is that because these right triangles have another angle that's 60 degrees, in addition to the 90 degree angle, the third angle must be 30 degrees, which means each of these is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is one of the special triangles we talked about in a previous lesson. The ratio of sides on a 30, 60, 90 triangle is always the same. If we draw a quick sketch of one here, something like this, if this is our, uh, our 30, 60, 90 triangle here, then the hypotenuse, if the hypotenuse is one unit, then the shortest side is half a unit, and the medium side is 1 half times the square root of 3. So the medium side is the square root of 3 times the short side, and the long side is 2 times the short side. Now here, we have the long side. So that means that the short side of each of these triangles is going to be half of that. So half of 14 is 7. And then the medium side is going to be the square root of 3 times the short side, or 7 square roots of 3. So now we know what each of these little little sections is, and if it's 7 square roots of 3 from the middle to the end, and another 7 square roots of 3 over here, then it's 14 square roots of 3 all the way across, so our D1 is going to be 14 square roots of 3, and if it's 7 from the top to the middle, and another 7 from the middle on down, then our D2 is going to be 14. So now we have 14 times 14 roots of 3, times 1 half. So we'll just go ahead and do a half times 14, get that knocked down and take care of those two things at once. So that just leaves us with 7 times 14 roots of 3. 
and 7 times 14 is 96 roots of 3. So our area is 96 square roots of 3 square units. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Actually, that's 98 square roots of 3. 7 times 14 is 98, not 96. My bad. Sorry about that. All right, now example C. All right, for example C, we need to see if this shape here is actually a kite. And we're just given the four vertices of a quadrilateral. So what we're going to do is plot those four points. So our points 2, 8, 7, 9, 11, 2, and 3, 3. Those are all plotted here and marked A, B, C, D. And I went ahead and drew the lines in between them. And it sure looks like a kite. But in order to find out whether or not it's a kite, we have to see whether or not it holds to the definitions that we know a kite should hold to. Um, so what we're going to do is take a look at the slopes of the two lines first and see if these two lines are actually perpendicular. So we went ahead and calculated the slope for the line AC by figuring its rise over its run, and then the slope for the line BD by doing the same thing. And we can see that the slope of one is negative two-thirds, and the slope of the other is positive three-halves. So those two slopes are inverses of each other. So we do know that this actually is a 90-degree angle. So we do have 90-degree diagonals here. And then finally, the other thing we need to calculate here is to see what the lengths of those diagonals are. We have 1 is 3 roots of 13. That's our distance from here to here. And then 1 that's 2 roots of 13, our distance from here to here. And then finally, we take a look at plugging these areas into the formula for the area of a kite. And we see that it is a kite because our diagonals are opposite each other. And our area then, that length that we calculated and this length that we calculated multiplied together, half of it gives us a total of 39 square units. So yes, it is indeed a kite. And its area is 39 square units. Sorry, that one was a little rushed. I was running real short on time. <laughs>